Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. Today I am doing a live draw along and we're going to be focusing on female heads that are foreshortened. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques and tutorials. I highly recommend that you guys take a look at this video, Anatomy for Artists, focusing on the structure of the head, and also this video, which talks specifically about foreshortening, and those should give you guys a really good basis for how to go about doing these foreshortened heads. If you guys would like the reference photos, you can find them in our Discord, in the news channel, and it's also in the video description below, the links to the original images. And of course, we would love it for you guys to post what you make in the Draw Alongs channel, in the Art Prof Discord. If you don't know how to get to the Discord, the invite link is in the video description below. You can post anytime during the Draw Along, afterwards, two weeks later, totally cool. We love to see what you guys are up to. And of course, we love it when you share on Instagram, using hashtag artprofshare. The materials that we're gonna be using today, first of all, we wanna say thank you to Legion Paper for providing some of the art supplies that we're gonna be using today. Check out their website. They have everything you could ever dream of in terms of paper. Take a look at what they've got to offer. These are the supplies that I'm going to be using today. As always, I've got my three different types of erasers, the eraser stick, the white plastic eraser, the kneaded eraser. I'm using woodless pencils and also some regular pencils. And then also, let me actually show you guys the paper that I'm gonna be using today because I do think with drawing, it does make a really big difference what type of paper you guys are using. So this particular paper from Legion Paper, it's called Lennox Cotton, and it has a little bit of a textured finish, but it's a great surface for graphite, pastel, colored pencil, and charcoal, and it's very durable and really strong. But you can use whatever paper you want. I just like to expose you guys to different types of papers. Okay, let's get up our first reference photo. And I had such a great time, you guys, doing really short poses last time. It really got my blood pumping. So that's what I would like to do today is just a whole bunch, five minute poses, just get right through them. And then let's see where we go. And just so you guys see, these are the pencils that I'm going to be using. I tend to really like super soft pencils. Like I actually have an 8B here. That's really intense. 6B, 7B, and I do also have my woodless pencil here. And this one's actually just a B. So this one's a little bit harder. And then if you guys would like to, you can also sharpen your pencil. So if I come here on the side, you guys can see that I've got a piece of sandpaper here. So what I just do is I take the pencil and I do this. And this just basically, it just rounds off the side of the pencil. So that way it's a lot easier to do tones because otherwise if the side of your pencil is too rough, you're not gonna get a good range of tones. So this is a really easy way to do it just like that. And you do need to have your sandpaper on the side of your board. You can't put it here because otherwise you can't get the right angle. So you guys don't have to do this. This is just my recommendation if you want to use graphite because it's easier, but you don't have to. Okay, so let's start out with the woodless pencil and we're just gonna do one face per page. And oh man, you guys, these are not gonna be easy. <laughs> Foreshortening is so hard, but let's do it anyway and get started with some five minute poses. Oh, I don't like this pencil. I think I'm gonna to switch to the six. Ah, I already broke one. <laughs> there we go, that's a good start. Because you know what, this is a quick pose. I'm not that worried about the tones being very easy to control. I'm just trying to put in the mass. Yeah, you guys, I can already tell these poses are gonna drive you and me up the wall. They're hard, they're funny looking. I mean, 
no matter who you are, they're funny looking. So this is very tricky. Um, and you really have to pay attention, I think, to the angle of the eyes and of the cheekbone and especially the chin. Like when somebody's looking up like this, that's pretty important to do. And oh man, this is already like smush city. Sheesh, like everything's so strange looking. And then the cast shadows don't help. And the ear and the hair. Oh man, you guys, we're, we're gonna have to work really hard today on our observational skills because this is not easy stuff that I'm giving you today. But you know what? I think you guys are up for it. So I'm gonna try to really block in the angle of the nose. And then the mouth is very dramatic. Like a lot of people are used to the mouth just being this like horizontal line, but in a foreshortened position, it's not like that at all. It's really, really weird looking. So yeah, oh my God, this is gonna be a rough day, you guys. I hope you're like really willing to do a lot of bad drawings like me and also to, to just let it look weird. That was my number one piece of information for people who are doing foreshortened poses. Let it look weird, it's gonna look weird. Don't fight that. That is an impulse which is completely natural to want to quote, fix it, but you know, you're not going to fix it. It's just strange looking. And I did choose pencil today because I do think today, not that I need to slow down, but I, I am going to have to look harder, much more than usual. I mean, you should always look hard. I, I'm not saying you shouldn't look hard usually, but especially today, because there's just so many things you're, you're up against in these particular poses. And especially use that psychometric arch, you guys. I mean, you always should, but especially today, everything is extra important in a way that it, it's not that it's not important in a regular portrait, but it's like in this one, if you're not paying attention, oh man, things can go wrong really, really fast. So yeah. Oh, and this is smudging all over the place because it's such a soft pencil. And I do want to get in the motion of the hair even though it's a five minute pose, you guys, there's still time to block in the mass of the hair. So don't, don't tell me you ran out of time because there's time. There absolutely is time. Oh God, Anne Hathaway, I am sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna just apologize to every single female in this particular stream because I, I just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to look this way. You usually look better. Yeah, this is a mess. Oh my God. <laughs> if I had more time, I could fix everything. But in five minutes, there isn't a lot of time. Yeah, like this mouth should be way lower. So everybody today, get used to redrawing things 18 times. That That's the way you're gonna have to do it. I mean, it's gonna look weird. Like already, sheesh, where is that mandible? Is it the cheekbone? Is it down here? I'm so confused. And then is, Okay, the ear is more lined up at the bottom. Okay, who else is like losing their brain over the foreshortening because I am? And I'm the one leading the tutorial. You guys are in so much trouble. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my goodness, this is a mess. Maybe we should keep them short because then we all have an excuse. We're like, ah, it was only a five minute pose. You know, then you have an excuse for the drawing looking terrible. At least I know that's the excuse I, I would use. I, I feel like that is extremely helpful. Okay, Anne Hathaway. <laughs> Thank goodness she's not watching the stream. She'd probably be horrified by what I'm doing to her neck and her trapezius. Sorry, we have not gone over the trapezius yet. We definitely will at some point. But for now, we're going to deal with this, guys. N none of this, like, I'll do that later. We're going to learn how to do this foreshortening stuff for real. We really are, myself included. All right, that's it. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so bad. Oh my God, I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm like really horrified right now. Let's just do more, okay? So we can feel more horrible about it. By the way, just so you guys know, I will be stopping to take a look at the chat, maybe like every 15 minutes or so. So if you guys have specific questions that you wanna ask me or you have a comment, just let me know and I will take a break at some point to look at your questions and answer them. But for now, let's do some more drawings. Okay, so that's five minutes. 
I'm sorry, Anne Hathaway. I'm sorry, Simone Biles. <laughs> you're so beautiful and elegant as a gymnast, and I just don't think you're gonna look that way for my drawing. Okay, so let's do five minutes. Let's, let's pick it up a bit, okay? This is a little bit easier because this pose that Simone Biles is in, it, it's just a little foreshortened. It's not as bad <laughs> as the Anne Hathaway one, so maybe this is a little bit kinder. <laughs> in terms of getting down the basic shapes. Um, but even this one has sort of a tilt in the eye sockets that I really want you guys to pay attention to. It, it's so minor, the foreshortening in this one. And foreshortening can be like that. Sometimes it's like barely there. And other times it's really prominent. And actually, you know, it's interesting because usually, I mean, it always takes me a long time to find reference photos because, you know, need the exact anatomical feature that I'm searching for. But oh my God, this dream, it took so long to find the photos because, you know, usually if you have photos of famous people, they're not going, oh, you know, that usually you want to see their face better. And so in this case, it was so much harder. Like I had to just search to find these images. It was hard. Yeah. So the foreshortening in this lip, much more subtle than what you guys saw in the other one. And okay, here's the mandible, which is the jawbone. Let's get in the neck. And Simone's hair is doing this funky like wave thing. Oh dear, I'm not even gonna try with this. <laughs> what is she wearing? It's like a necklace or like, I don't know. It's cool looking though. I mean, it's gorgeous, but I don't think I'm gonna have time to get into that. But I do have time for eye sockets and I do have time to put in the brow and especially, Oh man, there is definitely not enough head up there. Okay, let me make this a little bit more dramatic. So the hair, the bulk of the hair, yeah, it's like, okay, there's a lot of hair back here, guys. So definitely don't forget about that. And remember with the hair, look at the direction of the hair. Like the hair is going downwards. So you try to get that movement in place. Okay, zygomatic arch, I love zygomatic arch. Okay, here's the ear. Okay, so that's a pretty good basic structure. I want to get a little bit more specific with the nose and give the eyelids a lot more presence. You know, eyelids are very three-dimensional. People think that they're so flat. I'm like, no way. They're, they're really 3D, actually. And so it's important to keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to draw nostrils. I think people are afraid of nostrils because they're like, I'm going to look like a pig. But you don't. It's just nostrils, you know? So that's all. Don't worry about it. Okay, I'm glad this was the second drawing. <laughs> I should not have started with that Anne Hathaway drawing. That was like a really bad idea. Sorry, I won't do that to you guys again. That was really like not nice. <laughs> Ooh, Simone Biles, you got a good philtrum. Does everybody see this? Nice, thank you for making my life a lot easier. Now I can identify my bony landmarks. Okay, like at the chin, more bony landmarks up here. Although I guess that makes sense. I mean, if you're like a gymnast and you have this like incredible bone structure, of course that's going to be the case. The collar, I'm not going to draw the collar, but I'm just going to show like the direction of some of the lines. Let me go up a little higher so you guys can see. So I'm not drawing like the individual things, but I'm just drawing the basic direction of stuff. So we're not like totally lost. Okay, and then she has this hair that comes down and the ear, let's do a better job with the ear. I think I can do better than that. I think the nose is too big. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, you know, this whole street is just gonna be one big apology to all of <laughs> famous females. Like, I'm sorry I'm doing this to you. Oh, at least they're not watching. That's the important thing. I just, I would never want them to watch this stream. It would just be so embarrassing. So yeah, who, who else is drawing weird looking at? <laughs> Although, who was it? One of you guys actually said, they were like, oh, well, if it looks bad, I can just say, oh, it's foreshortened. <laughs> like, maybe that's our excuse. We're like, okay, it was five minutes. It's foreshortened. Of course, it's going to look bad. And so maybe that's our, that's our little excuse, right, for why our drawings are not quite working out the way we want them to. So, you know, as long as you have an excuse, maybe that's the important thing. I do love the expression in this portrait. It's just really, really beautiful. 
Oh man, that looks terrible. <laughs> oh my God, it looks so bad, you guys. Oh my God, I'm like so horrified by this whole thing. Whoops, sorry, lost our timer. Okay, so let's reset the timer. Okay, let's do one more, you guys, and then I will take a break and take a look at comments. Oh my God, why? Why did I pick like the most horrible foreshorten? I know, because it's a foreshortening streak. <laughs> That's why, this is a really hard one though. Tell me if you can recognize this actress just by the lips, because you really can't see the rest of their face. But tell me if you recognize this actress. <laughs> okay, let's start another five minute poses. We're just gonna dive in, guys. We're just gonna get really crazy and move around. Yeah, I don't know that I would have recognized this actress just based on the photo. I, I think I might've actually had a hard time because there's something about the eyes, like when you don't see the eyes, it really is more difficult. Oh, that's too high up. Okay, let's move their head down. Let's put the chin down here. And remember you guys, don't be afraid to just draw right on top of things. I think that's fine. I think it's faster. Like I really sort of like lose my groove if I stop to erase things. Like, especially if I know I only have five minutes, it's not really something that I, I want to stop. I really want to take the time to work on that. And the hair is like crazy. It's actually really fun. The hair is like so beautiful. Wish I had more time to work on it. Okay, now that is a scribbly mess. That is so horrible, you guys. Oh my God. Th this is so bad. Like, like actually <laughs> some of the last drawing streams, I was like, oh, I'm getting better. And I'm like getting better at drawing on screen because the thing about drawing live is the drawings never come out as good as I want them to. Like after every single stream, I'm like, oh, that could have been better. And why didn't I do this? And then the last few streams, I was like, it really is getting better. And now I'm like, okay, it is, it, this is like reverse progress basically. <laughs> oh man. And then the, okay, th this is just a big domino disaster. It's like, oh man, do one thing, fix 18 other things doesn't help that your nostrils are difficult to draw. Who figured out who it was? It's Angelina Jolie, if you guys can figure it out. But she has a very um, dramatic lip that I think would be very fun to draw. Oh, if I could actually get her chin in the right place. Who, who else is having trouble with the chin? The chin's kind of driving me up the wall and I'm not getting the tilt of the mouth. Oh, you guys, this is so bad. And then the tilt, I didn't get any of the tilt. Oh my God, this is terrible. <sighs> See, see this, the, the nose is really, it's tilted. Like I totally was drawing it as if it were a front view and same with the mouth. Oh man, what a mess. And now it's too high, come on. Why can't something work? Okay, there, at least we got the tilt now. Okay, there's the tilt, but now that moves the chin down here and now the cheekbone is up there. Oh shoot, and then the mandible's over there, what? And then the all right, let's just redraw everything 18,000 times. I'm okay with that. That's fine. I just want to give a little bit more motion in the hair, the ear. Yeah, see the ears, does everybody notice, this is a very typical foreshortened thing, that the ears are tilted, that one is higher than the other. So does everybody see how the ear on the right is lower than the other one? Oh, you guys. I know you can't really see it, but her acromion process is sweet. It's in the lower right-hand corner. It's amazing. Oh my God. Thank you, Angelina, for having good acromion processes. Okay, if anything, I just want to nail the nose and maybe some indication of the eye sockets. And I guess, the, okay, there's the cheekbone right there. Oh, I, I have to get this mouth in place. Like the mouth is so funky and strange. And then there's the lip. Oh my God, this is such a mess. All right, who else is like, oh, my brain is exploding right now. I mean, my brain is always exploding, but it's like extra exploding today. <laughs> it's like more. Plus for me, it's earlier. Like I actually just woke up like an hour ago, so I have not done a lot today so far. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to get the angle. Like if that's all you can do, if you can just get the angle, I think that's fine. Like you've, you've succeeded if you just, oh my God, I did not get the angle. It's so much more tilted. I thought it was tilted. It's not tilted enough. 
Oh my god. Okay. Look, I only have a few more seconds, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try <laughs> to draw over it. It's gonna be a horrible mess. Like that? <laughs> Is that more of an angle? <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, th this is so, this is like the crappiest drawing I've done in like a month, you guys. This is really, really bad. Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed this is on video. <laughs> and it's such a beautiful portrait and I totally like mangled it. Like it looks really, really bad. Oh my god, <laughs> you guys, it looks terrible. Oh, yikes, yikes. I hope some of you are not <laughs> first timers. If this is the first stream you've watched, you're probably like, oh, why are you teaching? Okay, you're crazy. All right, let's go to the top. Oh, hello, Hugh Jackman. Okay, let's come up here and I'm gonna see what you guys are saying in the live chat. And let's see if you're all losing your mind like I am as well. Okay. Ra Nuk is saying, are we gonna do portraits with facial hair? And if no, can we, or do we do that with hair drawing, draw along? We will. I'm just focusing on female heads right now, but I think in two weeks, there's another draw along and we're gonna be doing sustained drawings of male actors. And, uh, you know, just have to find some pictures of Hugh Jackman with gross facial hair. Oh, he looks really bad. I mean, some people, it, like, they look great, but, ooh, Benedict looks bad. Like, did you guys see that movie 1918 that he was in? I couldn't watch it because I was like, ew, he has a gross mustache. Yucky. But yes, Raw Nuck, we are definitely going to be doing that because facial hair is difficult. In fact, <laughs> my favorite facial hair story is I was in art school and I was taking this portrait painting class and we were doing these really long poses where we were painting the model 12 hours a week for six weeks, the same portrait painting. I don't know what the model was thinking, but he had like a full out bushy beard. The last week of class, he shaved it off. And we all went, what? <laughs> we're like, what are you thinking? Like, oh my God. Like we, we could not work on a paint. He was like a different face because the form and the mass changes a lot when you have a very big beard and we just were like oh my god what were you thinking dude you couldn't wait seven days to shave that beard like really you had to shave it that one week I, I just could not believe that he did not think that through so yeah Catherine is saying my brain is lost but at least it's funny exactly because you know if we all draw like idiots together it's actually more fun that way because then you know, you're not sitting alone in a room thinking my drawing sucks because that's not so fun. It's much better when you can draw crappy drawings with other people. Okay, let's see what else people are talking about. C. Dont Shukla says, I found this channel yesterday. I've been hooked. Can't stop watching your videos. I binge watch almost all the videos. They're lovely. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you found us. I know we have a lot of videos now. Like I was looking at the channel. It's like, oh my God, we have over 500 videos. That's insane. And what's crazy is that we actually have a lot of videos that I unlisted because they were so terrible. So we actually have a lot more than that, but I'm like too embarrassed to show some of those. So, <laughs> Okay. Johanna says first draw along. Very cool. Kenny can relate to the struggle. And Victor, I feel you. These are the worst catches I've ever done, says Victor. Yep, <laughs> I, I'm with you right there. Diva is saying this is so fun. I love how interactive this is. Guys, I look forward to these draw alongs as much as you do because it's just a chance for me to let loose, draw, hang out with you guys. It's like really, really chill and I don't have to feel like I need to do a great drawing. I feel like I can really just talk to you guys through the process because it's not, a linear process like your drawings don't get better 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 and a lot of times it's like <laughs> it just kind of goes to crap before you start to get any type of results which is very very tricky lunar says i'll definitely catch up later post them in the discord my sketches will be horrible and i will look forward to it awesome i'm so glad i can help you guys with that yeah so this is the discord so you guys want to go and post in the draw alongs channel. And even if you're watching this later, you're not doing it live. It's still great. Like I've had people who are going back 
and doing the old draw alongs and posting. So that's fabulous, you guys. You post anytime you want for any single stream. Okay, Luis D'Antonio, first time follow along, feels right for starting, awesome. And Michael Beckett says, wow, drawing foreshortening will wake you up in the morning. Yep, <laughs> I am definitely awake now after, uh, oh God, I'm sorry, Angelina Jolie and Anne Hathaway and Simone Biles. So <laughs> Emily says, at least I now know what these celebrities look like in Melton. <laughs> exactly. They're probably not used to looking like a Klaus Oldenburg sculpture, but that's okay. If you don't know who Klaus Oldenburg is, he does these huge sculptures and they're like these soft sculptures. So he'll make like a fan, but the fan is like melted. It's sort of like 3D Salvador Dali in a way. So anyway, check him out. Yeah, they, they all look like Klaus Oldenburg uh, pieces right now. Catherine is saying, how come you're using Woodless Pencil? Yep, that is what I'm using instead of Conte, like last week's draw along. Well, a couple reasons. The first reason is that I do think with pencil, for me at least, I do slow down a little bit because the pencil's sharper and the marks are smaller. Whereas I think when I work with Conte, for me, I almost work faster than I should. And so I end up getting way far ahead of myself, which is not always a good thing when I'm trying to really build the structure of a head. And I know for foreshortening, the observational stuff is like 10 times more important. So by having the pencil, for me, slowing it down, looking more carefully is better. But another thing too, is I do like to switch up the materials in the draw alongs. So you guys aren't always seeing the exact same material because I do think it's really great not only to use a different material, but to say to yourself, like, listen, like, how does this actually shift? Maybe the way that I draw it, because I really do think you guys that every single technique and material gets you to draw a little bit differently. Like I'm not always the same person when I draw with Conte as I am when I'm drawing with a woodless pencil. It's just a different beast. And that's really, really fun. Okay. And Lunaire is saying, can you do a session on black paper at some point? So much trouble drawing on dark surfaces. Well, I believe this is one. So this is a draw along that I did a ways back. And I was doing drawings with white Conte on black and toned paper. And we drew from Robert Maplethorpe portraits. So Lunaire, I would check out this one. And there is a playlist on our YouTube channel. It's called draw along. So you guys can just check out that playlist and you'll be able to find everything. Okay, awesome. Let's go back and we're going to do some more drawings. All right, so I'm going to go back to my drawing position like this. Okay, let's switch the scene. All right, let's do like a little bit longer. I don't want to go like too long because otherwise, um, I'm gonna lose my rhythm. So, okay, hang on a second. Let's get rid of this head. And we're gonna go up to this head. Oh man. Okay, this this is not, this is not improving, guys. <laughs> this is really hard. This is Anne Hathaway again. And okay, this is just gonna look like a beast. Like this is just like really scary looking. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I, I can do that. Okay, remember, it's foreshortening, let it look weird. It's okay for it to look weird. Okay, let's do eight minutes. And I think that's going to give me just a little bit more time, but not too much time. So I'm gonna start out with that same 6B pencil. Actually, no, yeah, I, I don't wanna go 8B. 8B is a little bit hardcore for me right now. Okay, so, you know, this one might actually, well, I don't know if this is true. This one might actually be a little, a little bit easier only because it's so severe that it really is like a different form altogether. Whereas I feel like the other one, it was like sort of close to being human-like. This one, not so much. So maybe that's a good thing. And I really want to get the tilt this time, guys, because I feel like last time I just oh, did a terrible job with that tilt. And use the nose as a real landmark in this case. And the hair too should help. So, okay, here's the cheekbone. We're gonna come down here. This is the mandible, little slice of the neck. 
and definitely put in the clothing. The clothing is going to help you guys. If you don't put in the clothing, it's, it's so much tougher, in my opinion, to get stuff done. Okay, let's make that up a little higher. Okay, so let's get in cheekbones. I think that nose is too big. I really need the tilt. I'm going to be sad if I don't get the tilt. So let's put, let's exaggerate it. Okay, I'm going to make the tilt more dramatic than I think it should be. And you know what? It might just come out just right. So I'm going to actually fix this cheekbone, make this cheekbone really calm down. That might be the answer to my problems. Maybe I'm just not exaggerating enough. So if that's the brow, okay. And the mouth is, look at that mouth. It's like right underneath the nose. Oh, geez. Look at that. Oh, that's a really intense mouth. Does everybody see that? That, that is cool. A at least with this, it's like, you're not even trying to make it look like a person. You're just like, yeah, it's this like creature thing. <laughs> it's like just there. Okay. Uh, the ears are strange. Oh my God. They're, they're weird. Okay. So there's the neck. And then maybe if I, nah. See, I'm doing more erasing right now because I think I'm just trying to really nail the shape. Oh my God, don't the ears look like earrings? Like they're, they're so strange. Like the point of view is so bizarre. Okay, let's get in the bulk of the hair coming down because again, these shapes matter, okay? Don't leave the hair for the last minute. That is not a good idea, guys. I don't recommend that. And the nostrils are way more pivoted than I have them like this. Like today, I, I'm not sure I'm going to do the rug of tone as quickly because last time I did it fairly early, but I think that was mostly because I was using the Conte. And so I feel like the Conte sort of put me in that frame of mind, but the pencil, not so much because I'm really trying to nail the structure. Okay. I guess, okay. That's the mandible. This is the mandible here. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on the shirt because actually the shirt is a really good landmark for all these things. And even like coming down this like vest that she's wearing like that. And then this is a cool outfit. <laughs> I really like this. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I don't feel like I'd want to be a Hollywood actress. I feel like that would be a really hard job. And I don't know, so much uncertainty. I feel like it must be such a difficult profession to be in. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. All right. That is really scary looking guys. Okay. I'm like really afraid <laughs> for what I'm doing. All right. You guys, we're going to draw the teeth. Everybody ready. I know you're all going to flip because you're all going to be like, oh my God, I didn't draw the teeth. Yeah. You know what? And the key with the teeth is you want them to group. Okay. Don't try to see them as individual pieces, like see them as a group. So like back here, you'll notice I'm drawing three teeth at the same time. I'm not just drawing one. So here is three teeth at the same time. That's like a group right there. There's another group here. And the two front teeth I am going to emphasize a little bit more. And they're a little bit too, I think, outliney. So I'm going to just lift some of that stuff because I do want the lip to be a little bit better. Oh my God, only three minutes left. Shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> All right. There is the lip. I guess you can't really see what's in here. So I'm just gonna block in a quick rug of tone, maybe re-emphasize this. And then, wow, there are all these like skin folds on the side. Like, does everybody see on the right-hand side? There's this skin fold, which is pretty dramatic. And I'm gonna make the nostrils stronger. And you know, I, I do have to, I gotta get the eyes in. At the very least, just a, just a little bit of tone like that. Although it is helping me that she's wearing so much makeup. That is kind of nice for once. Oh, is this, oh, this comes out further like that. Is that what the side of that looks like? I don't know. I have no idea. What, what is that? Let me see. Shoot. Okay. This is horrific. Who, who else is like looking at their drawing and thinking the same thing? Like, I don't know. Is anybody here? Like, I don't know, enamored with their foreshortening technique. I'm not, I'm horrified by the whole thing. Oh my God. So many adjustments because I don't want to lose the cheekbone, but also want to emphasize the mandible and maybe just a quick passive tone here. 
if anything, just to give the neck a little bit more substance. And I probably will go over smudging today because we haven't really talked about that much. And actually with these really soft pencils, it's easier to do, I think. Okay, I only have a minute, but you know what? I, I'm gonna do the rug of toe. I just changed my mind. I know I just told you I'm not gonna do it, but I, I am. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's just go crazy, who cares? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Anne Hathaway, you look like a chimera. Ah. <laughs> oh my God, it's so bad. It's so horrible. Okay, like worst drawing ever. It's so bad. I don't know. It's sort of like once it's that bad, you sort of like give up. You're like, oh, it, it sucks. It's so bad that there's nothing I can do. And there's something really kind of nice about that in a way. Okay, if I had more time, I'd probably go in and emphasize more here, but I'm just gonna block in these like big chunks of black like that. And maybe just punch in a couple moments and maybe a little bit more on the mouth just so it's not so horrible. So... <laughs> and the eyes, I suppose, need a little bit of something. If I had more time, I'd go back in and fix all this stuff. But now it just looks freaky. Okay, who's afraid of, like, I'm afraid of my drawing. My drawing is scary. My drawing is not, <laughs> not in good shape. It's doing really badly. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't know, this is kind of more fun though, because I've sort of given up on making it look like a person. So I'm kind of like, Woo, whatever. Who else has done that? Who else has given up on it being a human? Okay, there we go. That's one pose. So let's reset and we're gonna do another one and then I'll take another break. All right, let's look at the next image, which I believe is this one of Kate Blanchett. I love her. Oh, she's amazing. So let's go on to the next drawing. And you know, this one I'm gonna do a little bit longer Let's make this one, let's make this one 15 minutes. So that way we can get a little bit further. Okay, let me get up my reference image. And this is like such a neck drawing, like most of it is neck actually. So that's what's so tricky about it. Okay. Let's do this. This might be the only one that looks like, well, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> Let's just draw. <laughs> okay, really wanna block in. You know what though, as insane as that last drawing was, it kind of felt good. Like, does anybody here kind of have fun with how like messed up that drawing was? Like, I kind of love it. <laughs> I don't know, it's weird. Maybe some of you are just horrified. <laughs> I did set us up to fail a little, but that's okay. You know, it, it, it's all about, all about really putting yourself on the line. You gotta do that when you're an artist, okay? You can't just coast, you gotta keep it going. So even at this early stage, I am gonna do the hair. The hair is beautiful, actually. It's just so gorgeous. I'm gonna do the directional movements, and maybe this coming down. The neck is so important in this pose, you guys. Don't ignore the neck. So if this is the ear and this is the back of the neck. See, what's weird about the neck in this particular pose, I think the temptation is to make the neck like really rubbery and strange, but it can't be that way. You have to give it structure, okay? So what's gonna help Everybody see this muscle here? This muscle here, it starts behind your ear and it connects to your manubrium. That's called the sternoplatomastoid. Oh, I love the sternoplatomastoid. It's so beautiful, especially on Cape Blanchett. Oh my God, it's gorgeous, see it? Let me make this a little higher. Th this, sternoplatomastoid, okay? And then here's the other side. So there's two of them. Sternoplatomastoid is like a V. It comes down like this. And if you guys really show that, it helps so much. And then here's the clavicle. You can't see it that well in the photo, but in theory, that's what it would be. And you can see more of it over here on this side. 
okay, maybe that comes across. I really want the arch. I don't feel like I, you know, I think this is higher. Maybe this comes down more. I don't know. This is a really tough one, guys. Not easy. Okay, let's get back into the head. And maybe if we try to establish the lip. And then, ooh, awesome. See, Kate Blanchett, I can always rely on you for having the best zygomatic arches. Oh my God, I, lo I love her. She's amazing. She's so cool. She's such a badass too, but she's also like gorgeous. Yeah, she's incredible. Okay, here's the cheekbone. And notice the indentation because then here you have the mandible which comes down. And actually I got to lower the hair. I think I made it a little bit too high. So let's push the hair down. Okay, and then the lip, how much speed? Okay, I, I gotta do like the line in between the lips because I think I'm getting a little bit confused. She has a little bit of a cleft chin. It's, it's not that dramatic. It's, it's a little bit subtle the way it is, but you can definitely see it. And yeah, she's gonna need a rug of tone like really soon because uh, this is tricky. This is a really hard pose. Although I, I really think that first one was the worst, <laughs> that first one with Anne Hathaway. Or I don't know, maybe it's because I just wasn't warmed up and like, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't ready to go, who knows. Okay, blocking the eyes, here's the brow forehead and I whoa that is weird so the nose is like up here and then the eyebrow is like behind it okay I'm so confused and is the eye like this it's a little bit curved and I guess is that the eyebrow I have no idea I, I'm just like throwing this out there I don't know I really don't know have you guys noticed that's an art prof thing where we like come on the stream and we're like, we're gonna talk to you about this. And we're like, we don't know. <laughs> That's what happened. We did a stream. It was me and Deep D and Alex. And we were to be talking about how do you know when your artwork is finished? And by the end of the stream, we're like, we don't know. We really don't know. <laughs> it's it really hard. Okay, that looks so, oh my God, it looks so bad. I'm so embarrassed, Kate Blanchett. Uh, I think I got to just rearrange everything. It's like this eye has to be much higher. So it lines up with the other one. Yeah, that was the biggest problem. And then I think the lip <coughs> actually should be a lot lower and wider. You guys notice that the lip is so much wider than you think it is. It, it really is not that thin. So let's get in the upper lip and just a little tiny bit of this. You know, I think the chin is bigger. Shoot, I think I need the shadows like really soon. I think, oh no, crap. Is that, oh, this mandible's driving me up the wall. Come on, just cooperate, <laughs> please. I think it's too long. Oh my God, it's so, ugh. All right, let's do a little bit more work here because I think I'm getting a little stuck in this section. I think I'm spending too much time over there and the eyebrows are not lined up at all. So I, I will get back to this later. I just want to put something there just so I have like a placeholder. I do that a lot where I just, I'm like, yeah, just, just got to put something there. That's all. Oh my God. I'm See, what I'm doing right now, I'm just looking at it from a distance and I'm trying to like compare different areas that I think could be tweaked. Because you know, if you guys look at your drawings too close, it's actually really hard to do. So I try to really get distance. Like I can already see that the ear was way too low before. So I'm gonna push it up and that then pushes up this. Oh shoot, which pushes up this. Okay, does everybody see that? It's like I drew this like <laughs> five times in a row just to see what happens. Okay, that actually pushes the clavicle up which then pushes up the sternocleidomastoid, okay. And then this clavicle is further up. Okay, that, that's actually, I think, a little bit better balanced. I gotta put this hair back in because it got erased. This is what it is with drawing. It's like, you're just constantly resurrecting things. You're constantly like, put it back, kill it, put it back again. All right, this big chunk of hair has to come across and get it a little bit less pronounced. Um, like that because I, I just want to get the 
the chunk and like the mass of the hair. That matters to me a lot more. And this, this little strand of hair, like this is pretty prominent. So I'm going to really get that in there. Okay. Who else is like going nuts <laughs> with the foreshortening? I don't know. Maybe you guys think this is like a walk in the park. This is not a walk in the park for me. I can tell you that. I think I need to make the mouth like more dramatic. I think I was making it a little bit too, um, a little bit too horizontal. I, I think it's more dramatic than that. Okay, and then the nose, oh, her nose is actually pretty thin and I do wanna make it a little more pointed, I suppose. It's tricky because this eyebrow is like right behind the nose, so it's weird. Oh, I gotta define the nose better. So that's the nose. Oh, and you know, the eyes are the same way, you guys. The eyes have more of a tilt like the mouth and I wasn't doing that. Okay, so this is the tilt and then there's even more tilt. And then this one also has ugh, even more of a tilt, does it? I don't know, I can't really tell. I think I'm not making it long enough. Let's put in the eyebrow a little bit more dramatically. Maybe like that. I mean, she's such like elegant eyebrows. They're like beautiful. Well, I mean, they're probably like what? <laughs> Nobody has eyebrows like that that are natural. I, I really doubt it. Okay. Oh, it doesn't look anything like her. Is anybody thinking that? Don't, don't think it, okay? Even though I just did, don't, don't think. It doesn't look like her because you know what? You do that, you're going to be very upset. I am now, now that I had that thought, now I'm like mad. I'm like, doesn't look like her. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, so I'm eyeballing it. I think I got to put in the tone. I think the lack of tone is making it hard for me, especially like this really big shadow in the middle. So let's just get this in. Actually, I'm going to get my darker pencil. So like this is a seven. I'm just going to even that out a little bit on the side with my sandpaper. Okay, let's just block in. I feel like this feels harder. I wonder if, you know what, I'm going to go, I have this pencil here. This is an 8B. I'm going to try this. It might be unnecessary. Oh, no, no, no. That feels good. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Let's just HB. 8B. I like this. Okay. Rug of tone on the side of the neck coming down like that. And I actually am going to do quite a bit of tone in the hair, especially because her neck is so like elegant that I feel like I need that in the neck to get it to actually work. I need my other eraser. This you need erasers. I like you, but you're such wimps. Like I need the strength of my plastic eraser to really dig into this like that. Okay. That's a little bit better. Um, yeah. And so here, like there's a, there's a really dark area. I'm not going to make it super dark, but I just want to like show that it's dark. Like there's a little pocket of black on this side, a little bit. There's another block of hair. This is a big curl down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna block in some of those forms. Oh my God, this is so hard. Ugh. This is really hard, guys. This is really hard for me. Who, who here is struggling? Let me know. Please make me feel less alone in my artistic struggle. Make me feel not so bad about myself. Okay, now I'm gonna build up some of the darks in here and then I'm gonna go back if there's time to like reinforce some of this other stuff. Like if I come in here and I block in some of the dark, maybe get this sternoclodomastoid to stick out a little bit better. I'm not gonna do a lot of eraser work right now because I mostly just wanna get down the stuff. Like I just wanna show you the beginning part of it and then the last drawing that I do I really will go to town and like finish it, but this one, I'm not gonna, this one, I'm just gonna try to figure out how to make this happen. Okay, let's go back in to here. And I just wanna like re-emphasize the lip. And here I am gonna use the kneaded eraser to neaten things up a bit more, maybe do some lifting. I don't know if you guys can see, but I've been smudging so much that there actually is a bit of highlight that's starting to happen. And sometimes that can really help you. So let's do that actually on purpose. And I'm gonna pull out some of these highlights. Like there's a bright highlight here and then in here. Oh, that's really satisfying. That feels good. Nice. 
All right. Guys, I just got distracted. I just started thinking about Michael Fassbender's butt in Jane Eyre. I'm serious. Like, that's he's got these tight pants in that movie that, oh my God, are hot. Sorry, I was watching Jane Eyre last night. This is all I'm thinking about. Like, I'm drawing, like, Cape Blanchett, who's, like, gorgeous, and I'm just like, Michael Fassbender's butt in Jane Eyre is awesome. I just, I love his pants, those Victorian pants. Like, they just really show off the form, right? It's all about form. You know, it's a form and volume, the volume of his butt. That, that's very important, you know, when, when you're thinking about anatomy. You gotta think about that form. Form is very important. And if you can't see the form, you're not gonna get your anatomy down. So yeah, okay. Yeah, down, we're, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna focus. I, I promise, I really am. I really am gonna focus. Okay, I wanna get the contour better. Oh, the nose is still driving me crazy. I think it's too small and the mouth is too... No, I think... Is the nose too big? I think the nose is too big. Let's make it smaller. So I'm going to come up here, move this. Let's fix the nostrils again. I think I'm going to put the nostrils like all the way up here. Oh my God, it's so crooked. Oh, who else is going crazy? Like, I mean, I'm always going crazy over my drawings. That is not new. But like this level of crazy, this this is not normal for me. This is like, why? Why did I pick this? Why? I don't know. I guess because I want to get better at drawing. I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. It's good. This is good for you. It's good for you. I'm telling you guys. This is good. <laughs> this is going to stretch your, your artistic muscles, right? That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's it's going to help you. Really. You know, you're fulfilling your quota of bad drawings, you're learning foreshortening. Me, I'm learning how bad I am at it. And uh, we're, we're just gonna do that. That's just that's just what it is right now. Actually, I'm kind of loving this 8B pencil. It's kind of awesome. It's really deep. It really feels like a different color than the other pencil that I was using. So I'm kind of psyched about it. Okay. I'm sorry, Kate Blanchett. Oh my God, you look horrible. In my drawing, I mean, not in general. She's amazing, I love her. She's got the best voice, oh my God. It's like, even when she was an elf, she was gorgeous. Although, I don't know, the elves are gorgeous in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That's not really new. Okay, I'm gonna pull out. No, 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 no. No, just a little bit more highlight. No, 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 no. All right, let's turn off the timer. And I am gonna take a break and take a look at your comments. So let me move to my other scene. And let's see if you guys are having as much of a meltdown as I am about all of this foreshortening that's going on because it's just really, really tricky, you guys. Okay, let me see what people are talking about. Victor says, oh my God, this is the weirdest portrait I ever drew. Okay. <laughs> Catherine is saying, that's not Anne Hathaway, that's Smeagol. Yep, that's definitely, in my opinion, a much more accurate assessment of what it looks like. Michael is saying, it's official, I'm getting worse. Yep, you and me, absolutely. <laughs> Carrie Ann is saying, Halloween worthy. Yeah, that, that's actually what it was, you guys. I, I was thinking Halloween creepy, strange looking zombie people. Oh yeah, that's definitely what it is. <laughs> okay, Louise is saying my drawing is definitely not human, you and me. Yeah, maybe this is like the alien drawing stream or something like that. I actually really wanted to watch Aliens the other day. Not, not the one with Michael Fassbender, the one with Sigourney Weaver. Oh, she's awesome, I love her too. I should put her in a stream, she's got amazing cheekbones. Nika Sensei says, it's comforting to know nobody knows what they're doing. We're all just winging it. Honestly, I mean, there are some things I will say, okay, I, I know how to sharpen a pencil. I know how to do those things. But it's like with that other stuff, like is this drawing finished or should I add more here? What's that? It's not that clear, you guys. I mean, that's one thing I like about it as being an artist, but it's another thing that drives me up the wall. I mean, I think that's probably one of the reasons why I liked music so much because I grew up playing classical music and it's like, yes, correct note. Like, you know, you did it right. Like, it's very, very satisfying when you know for sure something is correct. 
but it's like in visual art, you don't have that. So it's very confusing for a lot of people, I think for sure. C3Y says, as an artist myself, I see that the nose needs to be a bit smaller. I'm not trying to be mean or cocky, just trying to help. Yep, you're not being cocky at all. I think that's totally cool. Yep. And Anna Banana says, there is no way this is a walk in the park for anybody. Okay, good. <laughs> it's not just me. It's the rest of you guys. Okay. And Anna says, can't believe how I recognize your channel is. You guys teach and do amazing things. You know what? I'm going to agree with you on that. Actually, we do get a lot of comments, you guys. People say, your channel is so underrated. Why don't more people know about it? And honestly, you guys, I think it's just with YouTube. I think you just have to get on that algorithm because we definitely have had like spikes. Like we had this one time, like six months ago, we had this one video that just spiked. Like it just was on fire for a few days and then it came down again. So I don't know. I mean, sometimes I feel like getting the word out there is almost like playing the lottery. Like it's really, really tricky. That or you need like Oprah <laughs> to like say, go watch Art Prof, they're fabulous. Like I'm sure that would work. But yeah, it's tricky because I do think that we have good stuff and I'd like more people to know about it, but it's tricky. The, the marketing and publicity is really, really hard. And Luis D'Antonio says, digging this reminds me of drawing studio in college. And Louise says, can't wait to share the Discord for good. Oh my God, it's going to be awesome. Okay, can we all just agree to post our stuff, no matter how crappy it looks? I, I'm just going to post it. Like, I'm so embarrassed, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't know, somehow it's like better because we're all doing it. Like, we're all posting bad drawings. And so it feels a lot better. Lunaire says, Tilda Swinton. Yeah, I love Tilda Swinton. She She's sort of like... And I mean this in a good way. She's like evil Kate Blanchett. I don't know. Like the Kate Blanchett is both. So she can be like beautiful and soft and very caring, but she can also be freaking scary. Like Tilda Swinton is just scary, but I kind of love that. Like I kind of really like scary women like Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. I love her. Like I want to be her. She's awesome. <laughs> Michael says, every drawing, I see something I can do better, then I can watch for that in the next drawing, don't care how bad they are. That's great, because then, Michael, you're really reacting to what you are making and you're thinking through the different things that you can change. So that's a great mindset for you to have. Catherine is saying, that was the most rubber-like neck I've done. <laughs> I know necks can really look like that. I mean, they look like udon noodles if you do like a really bad job. So it's tricky because with the neck, there aren't a lot of, yeah, I, I don't think there's really any visible bones. I think it's all muscle. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess if it's a male figure and they have like a really pronounced Adam's apple, like maybe that would help you, but it's, it's very, very tricky. Scott Gilly says, Art Prof legitimately makes me super excited to draw every day because I know I'll have a community of people to make the next day even better. Yeah, you guys, if you're not in our Discord, you got to join because it is such a positive, inspiring community. And I'll tell you, when I first started Art Prof, I had no idea you could do something like that. Like I always associate the internet with people being horrible to each other and fighting and name calling and stuff. And I was like, wow, this is like one little pocket of the internet where people are so kind and encouraging. And also in the Discord, I noticed it's very much a two-way street. Like I've seen in a lot of other online art communities, and maybe you guys can tell me this because um, I know everybody has a different experience, but a lot of the art communities that I've seen online, it's very post and run. And everybody's sort of in it for themselves and people just want their feedback and they're not really interested in what other people are doing. So tell me if you guys have seen our communities like that, if Art Prof seems like an exception. I sort of think it is, but I could be wrong. Maybe there's other stuff like that out there. But a lot of online communities, I think, for artists are kind of a bummer because people are just not that caring about how other people are progressing. And what I'm seeing in the Discord, which is very exciting, people are really helping each other and watching each other's progress. That is so fun for me. Like as a teacher, I love that. I, wa I love watching how a student progresses and how people feed off of each other. And it's like, you really gain this very positive momentum, which is just so thrilling. And if you guys look in the Discord, 
not just in the draw alongs channel, but what people are doing in the art dares channel is phenomenal. Like it really has caught on and it's got a life of its own now. People are helping each other out and encouraging each other and giving each other ideas. We're posting your stuff on Instagram. I, I just am like, oh, thrilled. Like I have no idea it could be like this. It's really, really cool. Let's see, MX Honeyfoot says, I've had good experiences with the art community on Twitch. Oh yeah, that's cool. I actually have not really experienced Twitch much. I mean, I've seen it, but I have not taken a very deep dive. And let's see, Scott says, there's a community, won't name names. Someone said I should be drawing, quote, real stuff and not wanting to do comics. Not cool, that's obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, not good at all. Cerulean says, I think the internet criticism has gotten better recently. Maybe it's my imagination. My opinion is being influenced by all the positivity on the channel. I, I sort of suspect you're sort of right, Cerulean, because you know what? Now with online learning, there are a lot of people who never were on the internet before who are now. And I know so many art teachers are putting their demos online and that never was the case. They never had a reason to have to do that unless you're crazy like me. And I think for that reason, and also because people are online more, people are realizing, oh yeah, it's kind of horrible if we're mean to each other. So <laughs> that, that is helping a lot in a way. I mean, the pandemic is obviously a terrible situation, but maybe that is the silver lining that people are finding. Oh yeah, Tony Collette, W315. Oh yeah, she's awesome. You know what one of my favorite movies is? Tell me you guys if you've seen this movie, that movie, Little Miss Sunshine. I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Carell and oh my god I love Greg Kinnear in that movie he's so funny and then that end I'm not gonna tell you guys but that final scene <laughs> oh my god that makes me really want to watch that movie now like every character in that movie is just like amazing <laughs> yeah Margaret is saying art prof is a really caring community I love it it's a safe space I'm so glad you said that Margaret because I've had many people use that word safe and I really am proud of that in terms of art prof because there are a lot of places online that don't feel safe and where people are really afraid to say something about their work or, or to post something with a particular subject. I mean, why are people getting crap for making comics? Like, come on, comics are amazing. They're so cool. And as you guys know, we've been doing some comic streams lately, like the manga stream and the Hotter Starter comic stream. It's just been really, really fun. Okay. Let's get started. We're going to do a long pose now. And this one, I really am going to actually develop a lot more. Oh, wait, just more. This is a cool comment from Lunaire. The toxicity and entitlement of some academia related people scared me away from art school. So glad to finally see an art prof not condemning a lot of stuff, but being open. Yep, I believe in that. But I'll tell you guys, when I was in academia, I got so much flack about being online. I mean, I actively hid my channel from, like I intentionally didn't tell anybody about it because I knew I was gonna get crap and I did get crap about it, but you know what, screw them. So I'm gonna do whatever I want. I'm old, I don't care, like whatever. Okay, let's go back to my drawing pose and let's see who is up next. I believe I have Agatha Davis. Awesome. She's amazing. I love this photo of her. She looks like such a badass. I guess, I guess that's my whole thing. Like I, I like images of badass women because they're just like really cool. I guess Eloise Sherrod, who is a teaching artist here, she put it in a really good way. She said, you know, it's like, if you're a woman and you look at these images of women, it's like you want to be like them. You know, it's like they're badasses and so it makes you want to be a badass. So yeah, this is a great photo. By the way, you guys, if you don't know, this is a photo that was shot. Oh my God, what's his name? D Dario. It's in the video description. It was by the first black photographer to ever take a cover photo for Vogue. And this is Viola Davis, so they did this like whole big article about her. But um, I mean, can you believe it? It's like 2020 and that's a first for Vogue. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna do a 20 minute set and then we're going to take a break. 
and then I'll do some more. This one I'm definitely going to work on at least twice because I want to make sure that I have enough time to really keep that going. Okay, so here we have the timer. Let's start. Okay, sort of warmed up now, <laughs> I hope. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. This, this is a kinder drawing, don't you guys think? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll go back and work on the Cape Line Jet one. I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, this one still is tough for other reasons. This one has the the nose, which is really sticking up. That's pretty tricky. And there is a tilt. Does everybody see the tilt in the head? I feel like the tilt in the head, that's what I have trouble with. That tilt is very hard to do. So let's get in the forehead and maybe like just indicate a little bit of the uh, nose in the middle. I have, oh my god, I have so much trouble with chins. Like, I suck at doing chins. Sheesh. Okay. And even at this early stage, remember, guys, put in those shoulders and even the clothing. Yeah, check out that this is a really cool photo shoot. Like, they did a really great job with this one. I don't know, like, sometimes those Vogue covers, some of them are, like, really dumb. But sometimes they do a great job. I guess it depends on who the photographer is. Really makes a big difference. Okay, so I don't want to ignore the hair. The hair is such an important part of her character, but I want to get the ear in first. And I might not get all the hair in there, but at least I want to like indicate the mass of it because it's like really prominent and beautiful. Okay, let's see. Oh, I do see a quick question from Blah Blah. They're saying, do you mind if I do this digitally? Yeah, whatever you want. I mean, I'm using pencil. You guys can use whatever you want, like whatever you have on hand. doesn't matter to me. So, but, you know, I, I like to talk about supplies, like just in case people do want to use the same thing, and that's fine. Okay. I'm determined to get the tilt, you guys. I want to get the tilt. Um, I guess I, I it needs to start with the nostril. I, I guess... I, I was not really paying attention to the nostrils that much. And I think, oh, don't do this. Don't do what I just did. Everybody see, I went right for the eyebrow. Don't do that, okay? Just get the eye sockets in like this. I mean, she's wearing like a lot of makeup. It's actually making it kind of hard to see. And her eyebrows are like really, obviously, you know, done with tons of makeup and stuff. Okay. I I think that's a little bit better. I, I feel like the tilt was kind of driving me crazy in some of those other ones. Uh, let's get the chin to have more of a tilt. And actually, I think the neck is too long. I think I should put the shoulder up here, which actually that's better because then I can show more of the clothing. And she's got a great clavicle. Look at that clavicle. Ooh, sternocleidomastoid. Awesome. Okay. More clavicles. And here is another muscle coming down and back here. And I also want more of her dress like that. Okay, that's a little bit better than what I had before. I, mean, I shouldn't talk so soon. <laughs> like, who knows, it could go all downhill from here. Who knows? Yeah, uh, maybe the tilt is too much. I don't know, I'm not sure. Maybe, huh. who knows, we'll see. Oh, and does everybody see her philtrum is tiny? Yeah, the, actually, you know why it's tiny? It's because of the foreshortening. That's why. Okay, and then the, the lip kind of goes up, and then it comes down. And does everybody see on the lip, the left side of the lip is longer than the right side because of the foreshortening, okay? And there's this, like, little crease on the side. I know she doesn't have a lot of wrinkles, so it's it's hard for me. <laughs> I actually really like it when people have tons of wrinkles. It actually makes them, for me at least, easier to draw. I, I feel like there's more like landmarks and things you can kind of point to. And you know something? Her earrings are so dramatic that I'm going to put them in. Even though it feels premature, I still want to put them in because they are integral parts of the shape. Like, does everybody see that? I just put in just the basic hoops. And I'm sure I'm going to erase them and draw them again, but they are critical to the way that she looks right now. So everybody see that? Everything's in place now, okay? All right. So let's go in, and I'm going to show like a little bit of the direction of the hair, because she has these curls that are kind of like descending downwards. Like if I look down here, there's like a curl there. And so I'm just picking out the ones that really like show the direction. Like here, there's two 
that I'm noticing. There's one that comes across like that. This one's kind of going this way. So remember with the hair, don't draw individual curls, D draw the direction of the curl. Like this one is going this way. And there's another one that sort of pivots up like this. Another one that goes that way. This one's sort of jumping in that direction. And then this one's going like that. So that's really what you're looking at. Okay. So even though I'm not going to like tone in the hair just yet, I am going to put it in. Okay. Let's see. Um, we got to work these cheekbones. I think I made them too pronounced and I do think her mandible comes out more. So right now I'm going to slow down. I'm going to really look, okay. Th this is training in observation. You guys, this is what we're doing. Okay. I really have to, nostril and lip is not good. I really have to work on it. Okay. Let, let's really nail that down and I'm going to draw them together. I'm, I'm not going to draw the nose and finish it. I'm going to really try to work them at the same time. So that way I can see them better. Yeah, like the filtrum is tiny. Look at how small that filtrum is. It's the foreshortening. The foreshortening is causing the filtrum to be that way. And then I think I tilted her mouth too much. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. The angle is strange. Is that better? I don't know. I mean, her lipstick is very pronounced. That's the other thing. But she has gorgeous lips. Oh my God. They're so beautiful. I just love that. Okay, and does everybody see how the lip, it like comes around like that? Like it, it really has this roundness to it that I think is very important to recognize. Okay, let's get the chin a little bit more pronounced and then like a little bit more on the neck coming down. I'm just trying to like reorganize what's happening right now. I do feel better though. <laughs> I don't feel quite as hopeless. As I was, I don't know, maybe because this pose is a little bit easier. Who knows? I mean, part of it's warming up. I definitely am somebody who thrives on warming up. Like if I can't warm up, things are really hard for me to do. Okay. Maybe a little more. Okay. That's a much better angle. I think it's a little hard. You guys are seeing my drawing board at a slightly funny view. It, it should actually be more like this, but, um, that, that's just what happens because there's only so much flexibility you have with your webcam. Okay, so let's get in the angle of the eyes. Her eyes are strange in this because they're like a little bit closed, like, like not super closed, but a little bit. I'm gonna tilt down this eye a bit more because I think I made it a little bit, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure, she's wearing so much eye makeup. But I do, I do really love her eyelashes. I'm, I'm just going to indicate them because actually her eyelashes here, they're very prominent. So I'm just going to like put them in there. They're going to get erased later, but you know, that's okay. Okay. Let's just get in the pupils. There's a lot of highlights in the pupils. So as everybody see, I'm sort of drawing around those highlights. And then this one, I think I need more lower lid. I think it's more like that. I don't know. I need to step back. I feel like I've been looking at it up close for way too long. So let me just do that. All right. I'm going to just step back. Nose is too big. Oh yeah, for sure. Let's fix that up guys. Now it's time to pull up that kneaded eraser. That's going to work a lot better like that. Okay. And then, oh, that nostril's not, I made it too much like an egg. I don't know. Nostrils are really hard. Like they're, they're kind of interesting. So actually, if you guys look at it, the nostril on the right is not as wide as the one on the left. And so that's where the human figure is very helpful because it's symmetrical. And then you can see a lot better how things are supposed to line up. Okay. Uh, I think the eye, I think this eye is too far. I think I'm going to move it over. Okay. Let's just, get rid of some of that eye over there. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the whole thing. Um, let's move the eye more here. And guys, don't be afraid to make big changes like that. I know sometimes that feels a little bit too dramatic, but it, it is better, I, I think, than to leave it there. Because I think sometimes the reasoning is, oh, well, I spent so long in it. I don't want to change it. 
And I'm like, it's okay. Like it, it really is fine to go in and change it. It's not a bad thing. Okay, let's get those eyes a little bit better. Okay, still working on it. Let's get the eyebrows more present like this. Okay, get more forehead. I think, what's wrong with the lip? The lip is bad, it's really bad. Oh, you know what? Her upper lip is wider. Well, taller rather, taller than her lower lip. So let's actually fix that because I think I did not do a great job with that. I think this part of the lip is here and that moves the chin over here. Oh yeah, 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 that's a lot better. Yeah, her, her top lip is white, is taller than her lower lip and I did not nail that at all. Okay, and then this little bit comes out. This is that little pocket. Remember you guys, I was talking to you about that like pocket of the lips. That's a lot better. And then this comes down and then does that move her chin down here? I don't know. Like you guys will notice I'm not spending a huge amount of time on tone yet. Like I really need to get this going before that happens. Okay, I'm almost ready. I think just maybe a little bit more on this side. Yeah, I just, I need her clavicle to be a little bit stronger. Okay, I'm almost ready to do tone. I think maybe a little bit more. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna squint, step back, take a look. I feel like the eyes are too big. Ugh. Okay, let me just shrink those a little bit. And I think that might do it before I put in my rug of tone. Maybe like that is a little bit better. I don't know, her eyelids are not that clear in this photo. I think because she's wearing so much makeup, it, it actually covers up a lot of that area, which is hard. It's not easy. Okay, maybe a little bit more dramatic eyebrows. Okay, does everybody see all of those changes? It's a lot. That That's not just a few things. I, I'm changing many, many things. That's what it takes. And if you just keep changing everything, you'll notice that sometimes I'll say, oh, the nose doesn't look good, but then I'll go work on something else that is making the nose better. Like sometimes actually fixing something else will make the nose look better. Like it sounds really strange, but it's true. Like sometimes the problem is not the nose, even though you think it is. Sometimes it's something else altogether. So that's what can be very tricky about it. Okay, I'm gonna dive in. There's still a lot of things that would be better right now, but you know what, too bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna just block in real quick those dark areas. Uh, ju just like these pockets of black, like up here. You know, I'm gonna switch, this is a 6D. I'm gonna switch to the 8B because the 8B is just, I don't know, the 8B feels like kind of coarse. And I'm just gonna go to town with these marks. And right now I'm not doing curls, guys. It, it's like rugs of tone. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. That's what you're trying to do. Just get it in there. Okay. All right. And like, especially down here, I'm going to just draw right on top of some of the earrings, not here, but like the hoop. I'm going to just draw right on top of that because later I can take my eraser stick and get into there. Okay. See, you, you can block this in real fast. You guys, this rug of tone, it does not need to take a long time. You really can just get it in there. Like, does everybody see that like really fast? There's hair, you know, you can really see that. And of course I'll go back and I'll work on it some more, but it's like, I didn't do anything to the hair and already it's like, I mean, to the head and already the hair is like this beautiful anchor that is really helping me a lot. Okay, so I actually might draw a little bit around the hoop down there and then, wow, this, this 8B, it's like really different. I think it's this brand. I'm not really used to using Stadler. Like a lot of the times, I don't know. I'm not that picky about brands for erasers. Like I just kind of use what's around, but I don't know, some brands, the, the lead can feel a little bit different depending on what you're doing. Okay, really want to get this moving. Okay, I got five more minutes, that's okay. That's fine. Okay, let's do some rug of tone. 
So I would say probably here, I want this shadow to be more pronounced because the lighting is coming from the right hand side. And so I want to be consistent. That's the key to lighting. Like people say like, how do I do the light? I'm like, you, you do the light by keeping it consistent. If you don't keep it consistent, like if you have shadows coming from all different directions, that's where it becomes problematic. It's because people don't make the lighting the same. And so people end up like super confused about how things should be. Okay, and I'm going in at the same time and I'm sort of like reinforcing certain areas like this and even this big part of her earring, I do wanna emphasize just a little bit so we don't like totally lose it. I don't, I don't want that to happen. And like here, there's actually some like really nice, like really strong highlights. Okay, so we put those in there. And even that this part, which is her dress, ah, shoot, crap. Okay, there goes my pencil. Let's go with the 7H like this. I shouldn't press so hard. I just, I forget. These pencils are, they're a lot more um, fragile than I think they are. So I'm always like really hard on them. Okay, lock that in. So what I'm doing right now, you guys, you might be wondering like, why are you working on the clothing? I'm working on the clothing because the clothing is very important in terms of value. Like, does everybody see how now you have the black like this? And so now we've established that this dress is the darkest part of the image. And now we have some tone. Okay, I just wanna do, oh, I need my eight. I don't know where it went. I think it's on the floor. Oh, well, we'll just live with the seven inch. Seven inch will be fine. And I'm just gonna go crazy with this. Um, there's a muscle that comes down here. So I was kind of holding back before because I was trying to get things in order, but now that I'm feeling bolder, I'm just gonna start filling like crazy like this. And yes, yes, I know it's a mess. I know, and I know it looks weird, but y'all start somewhere, okay? All right, let's really get into this nostril. We have to make it a lot more prominent. I don't like the 7B. I don't know why the 7B like feels funky, but the 8B was good. I don't know, it's really hard to say. Okay, so a lot of shading back here, here on the side too. All right, this is gonna be a really cool like tonal shape here. Actually, I, I wonder if her lips are the bright, I guess the whites of the eyes are bright, but her lips have like this gloss. Maybe it's like the lipstick that she's wearing. I don't know, it's like really prominent. So maybe that's the brightest part. I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not totally convinced of that just yet. Okay, and the highlights are more here. Yeah, I guess I sort of lost a little bit of the cheekbone. So let's bring that back. Cheekbone should be a lot more prominent. And actually, I'm going to switch to the 6B because the, the 7B is being a little bit wonky. It's kind of bugging me. So I'm going to go back to the 6B. Lock in. I, I really I need those cheekbones. You've got such beautiful cheekbones. I don't want them to go to waste. So this is a back and forth. Little here, little there. Pull it out, put it back. Oh, shoot, what did I do? Oh, okay, that was just my eraser. I thought I like put a brown mark back there. That was weird. Okay, something like that is a little bit better. And I do, I really do want the eyes to pop. And I might have to do that on the next round because it looks like we're almost out of time right now. Because the eyes are just like mesmerizing in this photo and I want them to look that way like this. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to really pull out a lot of stuff back there because there's just so much eye makeup. It's really hard to see. And underneath the eye lid as well, So yeah, it's like, you see, everything got lost. <laughs> it's like the more I worked on it, the, the less she got. Now she just looks worried. 
shouldn't do that. You don't look worried. I don't want her to look worried. She, she's awesome. Okay. Maybe some more shading on the nose. And maybe let's pull out the mouth more because I didn't do a great job with the mouth. Oh, okay. That's the end of our 20 minute pose. So let me go in and I'm going to switch scenes and let's see what you guys are talking about in the chat. Okay. Let's see. Gitali says, I think I watched one of your portfolio critique videos. It really changed my view on art for the better. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, the portfolio critiques have been very popular. I know a lot of people really enjoy, I think, seeing the scope of an artist, because when you're looking at a single artwork, I mean, sure, you can certainly get something out of that, but there's something that happens when you see many pieces by the same artist. It's like by contextualizing those specific artworks, you really do start to look at the artist in a different way. That's why I enjoy the portfolio critiques, because I really feel like I understand the artist on a deeper level. And Lunaire says that hair is giving my brain a meltdown already. Love the photo though. She's stunning. I know the hair, like any hair I think that's got like little curls in it is really, really hard to do. I think that's extremely challenging because it's like you want to make the mass, but it's like you do need to show the curls. Like what are you supposed to do? I'll see if I can show you guys a little something that you can do. And let's see. Vpan says, for shortening is so difficult. I have smooth brain right now, but this is really helpful. Cool. David says, my Viola Davis is looking like Oprah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's fine. I def I think somebody was saying the other day because Jordan did that procreate draw along with me. People were like, you're making him look like Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> I'm like, that's cool. I love Joaquin Phoenix. He's awesome. Well, see, I like him in the Gladiator movie. I know he's not that attractive in that movie, but I love his character. I saw Joker. Eh, that wasn't my favorite movie. I mean, he's just great. I just love him. He's awesome. Cerulean says, knowing I had 20 minutes and had time actually made me tighten up in my drawing. Have to learn to loosen up. That's very common. I think a lot of people, when they hear 20 minutes, their mindset changes. And they go, oh, I got 20 minutes. Now I can do this, this, and this. And I'm like, yeah, but the problem with that is if you treat a 20 minute pose differently than a five minute pose when you start, you can, as you just said, Cerulean, lose that looseness and that gestural quality. And so what I actually tell students, I say, listen, it doesn't matter if it's a five minute pose or a 20 minute pose, you should start it the same way. And actually, I should do this to you guys. This is so mean. You know what I used to do to the students? I used to say, okay, we're going to do all these poses. And I'm not going to tell you how long they are. It could be a minute. It could be 20 minutes. We, we should do that for the next one because it's very revealing in terms of how people begin a drawing, what their habits are. And it really does make you draw differently when you don't know how long the pose is going to be. So I'll try that in a stream and <laughs> let's see how you guys do. It always makes everybody crazy because they're like, what? Oh my God, <laughs> it's only one minute, but it could be 20. Like you have no idea. Michael says, I'm finding using the side of the pencil and draw shape seems more accurate than drawing lines. I'll have to play with that more. I do find that that's the case for me. Maybe not everybody feels that way, but I do find that when I draw with lines, I'm tighter and I'm also less likely to change it because when I draw with the side of my pencil, I'm lighter and the lines I put down, they're broader and looser. And so they feel more malleable. They feel like I could just transform them into anything. But I think when people are putting down like really harsh lines, it just feels so permanent and it makes you not want to change it. So a lot of this is almost like tricking yourself in a way to make that happen. Lunaire says, I found that getting the quote triangle at the bottom of the nose in very early really helps me getting the angles of the face right quickly. I think you're talking about the philtrum, Lunaire. Is this little thing here? Yeah, that is triangular. So yeah. But anyway, that might be something that you guys can pay attention to. The, the photo we're drawing from of uh, Viola Davis is not so easy to see. Her philtrum is a little bit obscured. So yeah. Nural Nihar says, I had fun today. Awesome. I'm so glad. You know, you guys should be having fun. Okay. If you go to a drawing session and you 
hate it. Not the drawing, but like a bad experience. That That's not good, okay? It's one thing to not like your drawings. That's fine, that's a given. But it's another thing if you go to a drawing session and you just don't like the experience, like you are not enjoying the process, That that's not good in my opinion. So that says something about maybe it's the environment or, or maybe it's your drawing technique or it could be any number of things. But what I'm saying is that drawing should be fun. And it's challenging and there are definitely a lot of different things that people struggle with. But in general, even when I'm frustrated, even when Anne Hathaway looks like Smeagol, it's still fun for me. Like I still like it. And so that's the important thing that you guys should think about. David says, will we ever get to try figure drawing stuff using Pose Maniacs here on our prof? That'd be really cool. I've never seen Pose Maniacs before, so I'd have to take a look at it first. And also there's copyright concerns that I don't want to mess with, but I'm hoping pretty soon that I'll be able to do, get some models and shoot my own photographs. Because honestly, a lot of those like stock photo figure drawing sites, I don't like them. The photos to me, they're a little tacky. It's usually all the same body type. And that to me is really boring, so I have to see. But yes, eventually we will do some figure stuff, which is really cool. Doris is saying, what pencil sharpener do you use? Okay, well, what I usually do is, hang on a sec, I can show you here, <laughs> with my broken HB pencil. <laughs> so usually I'll put it into an electric pencil sharpener first, so I get the sharp edge. And then I take this knife and I just go up like this. The key to this is you have to put your thumb behind it. Like, sorry, I know it's hard to see. My angle is not terrific, but I just do this and I go up to the top and I end up with a really long lead because the long lead makes it easier for me to draw with the side of the pencil. Like if I don't have a long lead, it's actually very difficult to do that. So I'll show you guys what this looks like when I'm done. It's just, this is tricky because it's very easy to snap the lead. Like the lead doesn't usually want to stay in one place. So you just go around like this and then you're going to end up with a lead that looks a lot like this. Okay. So in theory, this would be sharpened. I just didn't sharpen it because I don't have the pencil sharpener here, but that's what it ends up looking like. And you guys can see these are two that are sharp at the end. And so this is more what I'm drawing with, okay? All right, Alonzo says, whenever I draw heads with extreme angles, it looks like they broke their neck. Me too. <laughs> you guys think Kate Blanchett had a normal neck? No, she had like, as somebody said earlier, rubber neck for sure. Let's see, Michael Beckett says, so true. Drawing alone, I'm so critical. Nice to have fellow artists going through the same struggles. I mean, I'm self-critical no matter what, Michael. <laughs> so for me, it doesn't matter if I'm with people or not. It's just, I think when you're with other people, you, you just don't feel like, like it's a bad thing. Like you're like, oh, it's okay to make a bad drawing. It's fine to mess up. And I do think that when you're alone, just sitting around in your room by yourself, you're not always going to be able to do a positive spin on it. Like it, it's very easy to like wallow and the horribleness of your drawing. And I think when we're here and we're having fun and we're laughing and cracking jokes and stuff like that, that's a really good thing. Alonzo is asking, do you have anything against using smooth or medium paper for charcoal drawings? Nope. I mean, if it works for you, great. <laughs> my, my whole feeling, you guys, there aren't a lot of things that I'm like against, okay? My feeling is that do what works for you. If the smooth charcoal paper gets you good results, great. If measuring the face, you like that, do it. It's not how I do it, but that's fine. I mean, it doesn't matter. Everybody has a different way of working. Like, I'm not here to tell you, draw like me. I think that's boring. I think what's really fun, as you guys know, when we go into the Draw Alongs channel, I don't know if people have noticed this, but all the drawings are different. Like, none of them look the same. Like, stylistically speaking, in terms of the media, in terms of the way the models, that's great. I don't want to go into the draw alongs channel and see 50 drawings that all look like they were drawn by me. I don't want that. I want you guys to find your own path, find what works for you. And honestly, when you guys are done, it's all like a matter of taster's choice. Like you might watch one person on YouTube and pick up this from them. Maybe you're going to pick up something like this from me. I might say something. You might go, nope, doesn't work for me. That's fine. You know, I, I don't think that there's anything that really is wrong. Like, unless you're like, 
hurting somebody with your pencil. <laughs> like if you're stabbing somebody, I, I'm against that. That is not nice, you guys. So don't do anything like that. As long as you don't do that, it's fine. Okay. All right, let's go on. And I'm gonna do another set, another 20 minutes. Let's see how far we get. I don't wanna to spend too long because you know what you guys, I have definitely noticed this is just me. This might just be me, but I do better when I spend less time on my drawings. When I spend too long, I get fussy and it's not so fun. So let's see how far I get. I might do a third pose, a third session on this pose. I might not, I'm not really sure. And actually this 8B pencil, I'm gonna try sharpening it just a little bit because I do like this 8B pencil. I just feel like I dropped it and I couldn't use it after that. So yes. All right. All right. Let's see. Maybe that's, you know what I'll do? I'll warm up with the 8B pencil, like in the hair. I think that might help me a little bit. So that way I can like smooth out what's going on. And I think that might help me a bit. Although now the 8B feels too coarse. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was spending like too long with the 7B. Now I don't like the 8B. I don't know. You can never get it right. It's, it's hard. So what I'm doing now, you guys will notice I'm getting a little crazier, a little bit more spastic with my marks. And a lot of that is just wanting to give the hair a little more structure. Because, you know, in the beginning, it's just like a big blog of shading. And I don't really like that. Like I want it to be a little bit more shaped. And so that's why I'm going in right now and, and just like blocking that in. Also helps because the darkness in the hair it's gonna help me organize the face as well. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see, but the 8B really is a different color. Like it's darker. I feel like it's a little bit more cool. I don't know, I could be imagining things, but that's just sort of how it feels to me. I don't know, I guess these are, oh no, these are all Stadler. They're all the same uh, company. I don't know, that's strange. I have no idea. Maybe they have like a different formula for the lead and the 8B. I don't know, it's very hard to tell. Okay, um, so that's a mess, whatever, it's fine. I just really want to get in some of these edges. And especially this area that's like behind her, her behind her neck, I think is pretty important for me to get that going. Okay, and actually I, sh I do want to give this like a more velvety look the dress that she's wearing, because I feel like that's pretty important in the scheme of this. Move this aside so you guys can see that a little bit better. All right. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, 8B. Awesome. <laughs> cool. All right, now I'm excited. I'm just gonna go to town on this. Oh, the hair is so fun. I feel like I could just spend all day on it. I'm not gonna, don't worry, I will get back to the face. I just. I don't know, the hair is so important in terms of really like establishing the form of the hair. So I, I just, I don't wanna leave it. I, I wanna keep it going. And sometimes I think when you draw the hair first, it's like, you feel like you did more. You, does that make sense? Like if I spent forever just like working on the face and I didn't work on the hair, I, I think it feels slower. So that's one thing that I do really enjoy about doing the hair first, especially because her hair is very large as a form and I wanna really get it in there. Okay, that's better. Now let's go in, I'm gonna do another pass of black. You know, I had in mind that I was gonna make this like, not a more accurate drawing, but a drawing that was a little bit more slow. And now I kind of changed my mind. I think I kind of wanna just do something a little bit crazy and gestural like really go nuts with the hair. I don't know, I'm not sure yet. I haven't totally decided, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna just go crazy with this. Like get, get the hair like really, oh, now I want Conte. Conte would be really nice to have right now in terms of getting those strokes down. Okay. I could work on the hair forever and ever and ever, but I'm not gonna. I do, I am later, I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna add in some of these like little hairs, but I, I just really need to work on this. So I think, get the eyes 
because actually her her pupils you, you don't really see a lot of the pupils like she's got really bright highlights in her pupil so i'm going to try to get those a little bit stronger oh and i lost her lip entirely shoot okay i need my 6b get that in there and I'm trying to do my marks in all different directions. I am doing a little smudging. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of smudging, but sometimes it's helpful when you're just like really trying to lay in tones, which I am right now. That is pretty much my goal at the moment. Really just block in those tones. Um, like her, her chin has to be a lot more prominent and some of the stuff down here using some of the highlights shoot maybe more like that I don't know I feel like you can see my strokes a little bit more than I'd like you to so what I'm gonna do now is try to even out some of those strokes so it's not so visible like that and then let's let's really punch up the chin the chin needs a lot of work like this okay that's a little bit better um, hmm. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm sort of losing the structure a bit. I got to go back in. We need some clavicle action, guys. Clavicles will really help. And sternoclonomastoid, very helpful. And I do want to go in and add some highlights down here because I feel like I'm losing those a bit. Okay, so I guess... No, I, I feel like I need... That's so weird. I, I feel like, hmm, I'm just totally talking out loud right now, but I think, no, maybe I need the light eraser. Let's pull out some of those highlights. Like there's a really bright highlight here. And then there's like another one here. Yeah, I love to work subtractively. I don't know if you guys do that very often, but I just think it's so much fun. Okay, she needs to look more confident. I feel like she looks worried. I don't like that. I, I want to give her, Oh, I need my, my eraser stick. Sorry. Okay, my eraser stick will be great for stuff like this. Like if I want to really pull out some of the highlights in the earring and also the whites of her eyes, I sort of lost those. So I'm going to put those back. Her whites of the eyes actually are really white. Like a lot of people, they're not really that white. Okay. Um, I really want to bulk up her eyes, like especially under here. She has these like very strong um, areas around the eye socket. And then the nose, pretty prominent up here, like the arch of the nose, very strong. And let's get the nose better. I feel like the nose is getting very mushy. I don't know, I have a mushy nose. So maybe for me, if you're drawing me, it's fine. <laughs> you can give me a mushy nose, but I don't know. <laughs> Viola Davis, you don't have the mushy nose that I have. Yeah, so now you guys have noticed I, I switched my hand grip to something totally different. I am no longer using it on the side. And let's, oh, we got to work her eyebrows, guys. Oh, she looks so woeful. How come, how come I'm not making her like a badass? I, I was looking for badass Viola Davis. I don't want her to look so worried. Let's use that. Maybe your eraser. I think it might be the angle of my eyebrows. They're just not great. And I think here they're longer. Like, I think I did not make them as long as they should be. So let's try that. Okay, that's a little bit better. But still, her eyes are disappearing. Like, I really need to... Oh, God, so much work, you guys. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe I just need to... Oh, but it's weird. Is that like light pink eyeshadow she's wearing? Because it looks like a highlight, but actually I don't think that's a highlight. I think that's the makeup. I think that's like bright pink makeup that she's wearing. Okay, well, got to add that in. That definitely makes my life harder. I have to say though, you guys, this 8H is a pain to erase. It's not erasing well at all. So if you're a big eraser, <laughs> this is maybe not the best pencil for you guys to use. It's just really hard to erase. I mean, the 8B is like impossible to erase. It's, it's like a charcoal pencil. It's that strong. Okay. I am going to do like a little bit, just like a hint of the eyelashes. 
I, I don't want to make them too pronounced, but I just need them to be there because hers are, are really, I mean, she's probably wearing like fake ones, I bet. They probably are not real. They seem insanely long, but I am going to put them in a little because I, I don't think it's a good idea to leave them out for too long. I think they're pretty important in this image. Okay, we really have to work on the lip. The lip is totally disappeared. Um, I don't like the lip. I feel like it's crooked. I don't know. I, I think this pocket should be a little higher. Is that what it is? I'm not totally sure. Okay, but let's get in. There's like this very pronounced shadow underneath the lip. And I think this is a little further to the right because her philtrum is about there. And then there's like a shadow to the right. Okay, and then this is more like the little crease on the side of the face, like this. Okay. And then, you know what I might do actually is I might lift a little bit of a highlight here because there is a little bit of reflected light and maybe pull out some highlights. I have not gotten to this cheekbone yet. I will for sure, but I feel like I need to soften it a bit. I don't know. What I like about the kneaded eraser, and, and you guys can tell me if this is the case for you too, I really feel like I'm sculpting when I'm using the kneaded eraser. Like it, it has such a visceral quality to it that I really enjoy. So that for me is really fun. Okay, and then, I don't know, I guess the highlight on her forehead is not really that strong. So we'll make that a little bit darker. And then way more on the forehead. The forehead I really got to build up. Like this side, is, it's pretty strong. This side too, and then maybe below the eyes. <sighs> I don't feel good about the eyes. I, I wonder if I need to use the AP. I don't know, this AP is like really messing with me, like hardcore, I didn't know. So I don't know, I think this is from the pencil set that one of my family members had. I think this is not my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> I just like picked it up because I was like, oh, there's a pencil. I think I'll use that. But I guess I wasn't thinking <laughs> when I picked it up. I just was like, ah, it's a pencil. This will work. Okay. And then she also has like a really pronounced upper eyelid. So I want that to be in there. And then here as well. I was sort of holding off on it because I want it to be there. But I don't want it to be too much which it is. All right, 6B, come here, bail me out. Let's do it. I need that to be a little bit more subtle. And then maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know, she's wearing so much makeup. Like that actually does make it hard because it's like, I can't really tell like what's makeup and, and like what's, form like it actually gets very confusing <laughs> so it's hard okay i gotta fill in her nose and oh this is gonna be satisfying guys i can't wait to do this <laughs> there's some beautiful like um highlights on there and i gotta work on the mouth the mouth is i don't know this is hard because the, the makeup she's wearing is so like glossy and strong and it's like you can see the wrinkles in the lip but i don't want to make them too wrinkled because I think that'll be too prominent and look strange. But I do want the, the like line of the lip to be very prominent. And I don't know, there's almost like this, this is tricky. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tone a lot for a little bit, and then I'm gonna go in with my kneaded eraser, and I'm just gonna lift a lot of highlights. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna try to make it like too dark like way too dark on purpose. And then I'll go in and I'll lift stuff out. Maybe that's better. Because I feel like drawing faster right now. I, I don't want to slow down too much. Just darken this neck, coming in that way. Okay, and I do want to do a little bit of this earring because as much as it's hard to see, it is absolutely part of the experience of this drawing. So. This one especially, like there's these like dark passages here. And then I'll, I'll put this in with the eraser stick maybe. Like 
there are these really pretty like highlights. Although maybe I need the, uh, this is, yeah, I need the rubber eraser. This one's a little bit stronger. And then I'll use the eraser stick for this like little spot down here at the bottom. And I'll try to really emphasize that some more. So this way we can see sort of like the shading underneath the earring like that. I'm gonna just do a little, cause I feel like I'm losing the earring a little bit. I don't know if this is actually gonna erase, but what I could do is go back in with the 8B and just pull it out like that. So even if the earring is just subtly there, at least it's there, right? Like that. Okay, that's better. Let's do a little bit more up here because I do feel like I'm like missing that. And you guys might think, oh, you're wasting your time doing these earrings, but I don't think I am. I think that they're important. I think they're part of the image and you gotta put them in there. Okay, so this one I am gonna go in and do the eraser stick and then draw around it to make it visible, okay? So you see that is the case. Okay, sheesh, it really is a different color. Okay, quickly, quickly, let's just do some 6B work. Oh wait, that's not the pencil I like. This is the one I like. Okay, we're gonna get really spastic here and really go to town on the tone. And I'm gonna do a little smudging on the nose right there, especially on the side, like this. All right, and now I wanna do some more 8B, because I, I need to get, yeah, this 8B, it's like a crayon. It's, it's so not graphic. I'll show it to you guys later. You'll see it in the color. Like it is not the same color as the other pencils. It's really, really difficult. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna work on this one that much longer because I really want to um, keep that freshness. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pull out a couple of highlights in some key areas that I think will be helpful. Like especially this nose, um, really wanna get that like sheen that's in the nose right here and also maybe a little bit on her lower eyelid is a bit of a highlight and then there's a bit there and I'm going to pull out some of the form in the chin Ooh, this is so sad you guys I love this nude eraser it's really satisfying like I, I just feel like I'm sculpting it's great I love sculptor but I'm not a good sculptor like I I don't know I always wanted to be a good sculptor, but I, I use it better as like a preliminary process. Like I'm not somebody who really is like a sculptor, sculptor. Like I have friends who are sculptors and that is not me. I'm so not one of those sculptor, sculptor people. Get in some of this. I think what I'm gonna do, cause I only have two minutes left. I'm gonna do like another five minutes just to finish it off because this, this doesn't need that much more. I mean, it, it everything needs more, <laughs> but like, I don't feel that I need that much more on it to feel satisfied. Cause I, I'm actually sort of liking these highlights that I'm putting in, these are really fun. And then maybe a little bit more, what happened to the, oh, it's in my hand, of course. <laughs> I was like, where's my eraser stick? And it's like in my hand, awesome. That is so typical. Some of these whites of the eyes. And then again, you can see the way I'm getting those whites of the eyes to work is I, I'm just drawing black around them. I mean, that's sometimes the way to do it. Like instead of saying, oh, I got to fix the white of the eyes, fix something else, you know? Okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the time. We're going to do like another five minutes or so. I just want to fix it up because I don't think I need 20 minutes. I think I need like five minutes. And I do want to do a little bit of the hair to show you guys. So what I'm going to do with the hair is I am going to add a couple of curls. 
And you guys will see quickly how that's going to work. It's sort of like you pick out a couple. Oops, sorry, you can't see. Maybe I'll do that so you guys can see a little bit better. So it's like you're not drawing every curl, but you're drawing little pieces. And I'm drawing them pretty aggressively because I want them to really show. And especially down here, I, I sort of want to hide some of those earlier pencil marks I was doing, like this. And I think the key is if you just don't put them everywhere. Like, I'm not going to put these curls everywhere. I'm just going to put them in a couple spots where they seem very prominent. And then the rest will take care of itself, like that. Ooh, this is starting to hurt my hand. <laughs> Anybody's arm hurt? Mine hurts. <laughs> Maybe it's from doing her hair. Her hair is so amazing. Uh, let's see. I think I need my 7D back. Oh, the 7D sucks. Okay, let's, <laughs> we gotta sharpen this 8B because this 8B is definitely not happening. I don't know. The hair needs the 8B. Like, I, don't, I just don't think I can do it with the 6B because the 6B is just too glossy like this this really feels like a crown like I'm not kidding I don't know it's like I wonder if it's this particular pencil or if it's just that's the way Stadler does it it's hard to say you don't really know oh I forgot to put the highlights in the mouth I gotta do that okay hang on nice oh that's so fun oh my god that's so fun I love doing these highlights that feels good you guys ah uh, yeah even if this doesn't look good, I still like the way it feels. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like, as long as you have fun, you're practicing, you're doing all these things. That's the important thing, you guys. That's what I think really matters, ultimately. Okay. A little more with the hair. Let's make the hair really feel like it has a presence. So like up here, here, I'll show you guys over here. Uh, Let's see. So I'm going to pull out this one hair that's really like sticking out. And then up here, I'm just going to really fill this. This is going to be like dark. Like that. Is that better? Yeah, I guess that's better. And then. I, I do want to show like the direction still. And then there's like a curl that goes like this. Okay, now I'm really going to bring out her earrings. Ah, crap. Oh, okay. 7B it is, I guess. What if I... Oh, that was really fun. I really enjoy drawing her hair. Maybe I need to draw people with curly hair more often. Super fun. Oh, shoot, shoot. Is that 6B? Oh my God, I'm so confused by what's what B. Okay, a little bit more. We're almost there, you guys. Ugh. I don't know, a lot of people are like, oh, you gotta slow down when you get more detailed. I feel like I'm the opposite. I just want to go crazy. <laughs> like that. Let me smudge that a little. And actually what I'm going to do is just a pass with the eraser just to smudge it a little bit. Where, where is my needed eraser? I keep like losing things. Oh, here it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to re-emphasize the contour of the hair. I'm going to do some smudging, not a lot. And I do want to pull out this earring more because I do think it's an important part of the piece like that. OK, almost done. Just one more pass with the eraser so I can pull out more of those highlights. I love you, kneaded eraser. You're great. Then 
show some of that clavicle here. More form going this way. Okay, and maybe a little bit more to lift on this side like that. I don't know, I'm just having so much fun with the kneaded eraser, I like can't stop. <laughs> okay, and maybe just a little lift here to show more of her cheek. And then definitely more chin action. A little bit of highlight here. It's like a little piece of reflected light. And maybe I'll just do a bit more on the forehead like that. Okay, I just want to do one more thing with the 8B, I lost a little bit of her forehead over there. So I'm just gonna get myself a little bit more 8B so I can fix the shape of her forehead and then I think that'll be it. <sighs> okay, because her forehead is more like this. Does everybody see that? Like I, I did not get that shape very well. And it's also, it's, it's not as sharp as I have it. Yeah, oh my God, that makes a big difference <laughs> in terms of the shape, oh man. Okay, I'm really glad that I did that. And actually it's, yeah, it's not even like that. It's like even rounder, sheesh. Okay, let's do more. Maybe don't do that. Ah, crap. Okay, this is like not meant to be, you guys. I think this pencil hates me. Okay, I just, I only needed like two more minutes, you stupid pencil. Like why, why are you doing that to me? Okay, I am. I'm not using this pencil again. This pencil sucks. Okay. I know, I shouldn't blame it on the pencil. I can't help it. You know, you gotta blame it on something. Okay, let's just do a pass of the hair to make sure that the contour of her neck is truly happening. Because it was not really before. And here, this edge of the head it's like really fuzzy because that's where the hair comes in. So let me go in and I just like really need this to be more substantial. Up here too, like, yeah, like this is now, I'm like, I wish I had Conte. Like why didn't I use Conte in the beginning? Okay, let's do a little more darkness in here. Really get that forehead to pop. Okay. And then just a little more on the nose. Okay, we're done, guys. There it is. <laughs> this AB pencil hates me. I still want to work on it more. I don't know. I still feel like the blacks are not where I want them to be. I'm just going to fill in this one spot. I need this earring to come in and really have a presence because it is, like I said, it's an important part of the outfit. And then just do more here. Whew. All right, let's see how you guys are doing. So let me go back to the talk scene. see how you guys are doing in here. Okay. What are people talking about? Shri Bandari says, I thought I was on the right track while I was sketching. Finally, when I stepped back and looked at my drawing, I was so off the mark, but had super fun drawing with the group. You know what, Shri? That's the only thing that matters. You know, I, I definitely have people who come onto my YouTube channel and they say things like, oh, this is too big, this is too small, this should have been a little bit more to the right. I mean, that's extremely common. And I don't mind that, but I will tell you guys, I kind of don't care. <laughs> like, I just want to just draw the drawing and have that be it. I mean, it's fine. Uh, let's see. This, that was the last pose, you guys, by the way. I'm not going to work on it anymore. I just want to take a couple minutes and look at some questions. Okay, ooh, Fox K, Mueller, greetings from the Netherlands. How very cool. Francois Charette says, I really need to draw more. I like how you don't hesitate half a sec to find out where to put the next mark on the paper. Yeah, I don't do that because I honestly feel like it just screws me up if I stop too much and if I just keep 
the flow. Yeah, things aren't going to be perfect, but to me, that flow matters more than I think the accuracy and getting things to be quote perfect, whatever that's going to mean. David Pena <laughs> says Viola Davis looks like Ms. Lauren Hill. Oh, I like Lauren Hill. She's awesome. I really, really like her. We should do a drawing of her. She's amazing. Um, 10,000 Crows says, this has made me realize I need a better eraser for my drawings. Erasers are huge. They really are drawing tools. A lot of people look at erasers and they say, oh, that's for getting rid of mistakes. And yes, that is one way. But to me, I like drawing more with the eraser than I do with the pencil. Like you guys saw how much fun I was having. The highlights and the eraser is really, really fun. Uh, Life Artist says, what shade of pencil should I use for the beginning outlines? It really depends. I mean, if you guys saw that tutorial that we did with Song Kang, she starts with a 4H. And I'll tell you, I hate pencils that are H. <laughs> Works for her, though. I mean, that's her technique and it looks great. I happen to like soft pencils because I just can't work with H. Like H to me just feels so stiff. So I would try both. Try the hard pencils, try the soft ones, and then ask yourself which one you like better for whichever different reasons. Moonbeam says, my 8B is being a lot kinder to me than yours. Yeah, I guess my 8B like hates me or something. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, maybe it's like chemically messed up or something like that. I have no idea. Um, you guys, I would love for you to join me in the Discord. I'm going to be in the Draw Alongs channel in about one minute. And please subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And thank you to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible. Thank you to all you guys who hung out with me, drew with me. I hope you'll show me what you made. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.